Oh. Hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Thursday, and it is Trashmas. Merry Trashmas. I hope that the trash elves pick up all your trash today. You didn't read your daughter's Facebook post last night, did you? <laughs> no. Oh. I didn't. I guess oh, not. it's rather amusing. So, we are going to start with Speak, O Lord, Your Servant Listens. It's number 589. And it says that we're listening. when God's, And we want to listen. And we want to hear God's word. And I know that's why you're here. But our text says, are you really listening? So, number 589. Speak, O Lord, your servant listens. Let your word to me come near. Newborn life and spirit give me. Let each purse my still my fear. Death's dread powers inward strife. Wars against your word of life. Fill me, Lord, with love's strong fervor. That I cling to you forever. Oh, what blessing to be near you. And to listen to your voice. Let me ever love and hear you, let your word be now my choice. Many hardened sinners, Lord, flee in terror at your word. But to me who feel sin's burden, you'll give words of peace and pardon. Lord, your words are waters living, when my thirsting spirit pleads. Lord, your words are bread life-giving, on your words my spirit feeds. Lord, your words will be my light, through death's cold and dreary night. Yes, they are my sword unprevailing, and my cup of joy and faith. As I pray, dear Jesus, hear me, let your words in me take root. May your spirit e'er be near me, that I bear abundant fruit. May I daily sing your praise, from my heart the anthems raise, till the highest praise is given, in the endless joy of heaven. Jerusalem struck down, Ezekiel 33, verse 21. In the twelfth year of our exile, in the tenth month, on the fifth day of the month, a fugitive from Jerusalem came to me and said, The city has been struck down. Now the hand of the Lord had been upon me the evening before the fugitive came, and he had opened my mouth by the time the man came to me in the morning. So my mouth was opened. And I was no longer mute. The word of the Lord came to me. Son of man, the inhabitants of these waste places in the land of Israel keep saying, Abraham was only one man, yet he got possession of the land. But we are many. The land is surely given us to possess. Therefore say to them, thus says the Lord God, you eat flesh with the blood. And lift up your eyes to your idols and shed blood. Shall you then possess the land? You rely on the sword. You commit abominations. And each of you defiles his neighbor's wife. Shall you then possess the land? Say this to them. Thus says the Lord God. As I live, surely those who are in the waste places shall fall by the sword. And whoever is in the open field I will give to the beasts to be devoured. And those who are in strongholds and in caves shall die by pestilence. And I will make the land a desolation and a waste. And her proud, 
her proud might shall come to an end. And the mountains of Israel shall be so desolate that none will pass through. Then they will know that I am the Lord, when I have made the land a desolation and a waste, because of all their abominations that they have committed. As for you, son of man, your people who talk together about you by the walls and at the doors of the houses, say to one another, each to his brother, come and hear what the word is that comes from the Lord. And they come to you as people come, and they sit before you as my people, and they hear what you say, but they will not do it. For with lustful talk in their mouths they act. Their heart is set on their gain, and behold, you are to them like one who sings lustful songs with a beautiful voice and plays well on an instrument, for they hear what you say but they will not do it. When this comes, and come it will, then they will know that a prophet has been among them. Whoa. Wow, yeah. <laughs> they were back to law. And uh, this, this chapter is your pastor's complaint against you. And tomorrow's reading is can be your complaint against your pastor or God's complaint against your pastor. There's uh, plenty of um, correction to go around. And I, so the first half, the, the uh, um, Jerusalem has been under siege and now that siege has finally fallen. The news finally makes it all the way back to Babylon. And uh, way at the beginning of the book, Ezekiel says that God, in some sense, makes him mute until it's time for him to speak. And, and so, so my mouth is open and I was no longer mute. Now it's time for him to speak. Um, each time that God gives him something to say, that's when he's supposed to speak. I don't think that that necessarily means that he was silent all the completely the rest of his life, but he didn't, he didn't prophesy, he didn't speak until God said, Here's my word. That's a, a little nudge for my brother pastors uh, that uh, make sure that what you're speaking is what you're supposed to speak. But the, um, then it talks about the people that live in the waste places. That is, the, the Jews who were left behind, who weren't in the city of Jerusalem, but are scattered around the land, they're figuring, well, Abraham was only one guy. We can still become a great nation ourselves because look, there's a bunch of us. And God says, and Abraham was faithful. Yeah, Abraham was sinful. Uh, he was a human being. But he was, he was faithful. And he kept a covenant with me. And you're not. And you think just because you live here or just because you are ethnically or, or uh, ancestrally the people of Israel, that therefore God will bless you. He says, no, that's, that's not how this works. Uh, you keep a covenant with me, and then we'll see what happens. But for now, I'm, gonna, I'm going to remove you all from the land. You're not going to be successful because you're unfaithful. And then he turns to the congregation that's with Ezekiel. Now he's talking about the people in Babylon who, who are coming to listen to Ezekiel. You should see this guy. He has great sermon illustrations. One time he dug a hole in his house and crawled through it. And another time he, he comes out with a backpack and he goes and he stays outside. And oh, One time he laid on his side and he made a little model of the city of Jerusalem. He's fascinating. You've got to hear him talk, right? That's, I have heard that about pastors. Uh, oh, this is, a, this is the most entertaining, most interesting uh, usually come to this congregation because they have a light show and um, whatever it might be, that people come and they're entertained by the Word of God. They hear it. But they're not, they don't do it. And the, this this really hits home. When a, when a, when a pastor struggles to tell you the truth, to, pre to, to preach the word of God to you, 
and and desires to see growth, you know, in your life. You you end the sermon, and you always are a hundred percent of the time. Did anybody hear this? Is anything going to happen? Over the years, we'd preach about stewardship, about God's ownership of everything, and and uh, and the value of the ministry that we have together. And we pool our resources as God gives them to us, and never move the needle. Doesn't mean because you preach the greatest sermon ever that now people are going to give like crazy, um, or that they you know you preach to people who all come on Christmas. Um, and and you offer them the gospel, and do they come back on New Year's? No, they they did there once or twice a year, and they're not back. People hear the word, but but they don't do it. Behold, you are to them like one who sings lustful songs with a beautiful voice and plays well on an instrument. <laughs> That sort of hits home for our devotions, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Uh, you, the comment I often hear that it was nice, I understand what's behind it, but but sometimes it would just bug me because of what was going on in the parish. Good sermon, Pastor. And I would say thank you, or I'm glad that you were blessed, but I wanted to say, we'll see. We'll see if this is a good sermon or not. Uh, I would ask you to encourage your pastor not with not with praise for his eloquence um, but with uh, assurance about what has changed in your life because of the word of God and that you desire the word of God more still because of the meal of God's word that he's served to you. Seek that out. Seek out a faithful preaching that challenges you to grow in the word. And then listen to it. And do it. Tomorrow, shoes on the other foot. Heavenly Father. Words, 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 we are inundated with them. When we listen to your word each morning, how long do we remember it during the day? Lord, we listen, we hear words of so many others, celebrities and companies, advertisers and influencers. They are influencers for sure. They turn our hearts away towards what seem like innocent things, but towards things that are not you. Well, let us hear your word today. And all day long, consider, how am I listening? How am I responding to the good things you have told me? Because your word is life. Grant that I may seek life there. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Katie's watching. Oh. Merry Trashmas, Katie.